Hello, I'm Pira Nada. Welcome to Rappler Talk. This January, we are commemorating the anniversary of the Bangsamoro Organic Law. And with us today is Minister Edu uh, Education Minister Mohogar Iqbal, who will talk to us about the challenges confronting the Bangsamoro Transition Authority in this important milestone. So, sir, thank you so much for joining us today. Salamat po sa pag-invite sa atin sa Rappler na ngayon po. So, sir, um, yung BOL anniversary is uh, happening in the next few days. Personally po, being a leading figure sa Moro Islamic Liberation Front, um, who was instrumental dun po sa pag-craft ng BOL, um, what does this BOL anniversary mean for you personally? Well, basically, on the personal level, at least uh, the celebration of the second anniversary of the foundation or founding of the Bangsa Moroto Nuhas Region and Muslim in uh, uh, is a signal that uh, despite all the challenges, we are moving forward steadily, uh, but the challenges are still there. And what's important, looking back, we have done something, and uh, it's just a matter of uh, continuing the journey until we finally and implements all the uh, agreements of the government and the more Islamic Liberation Front, uh, substantive by implementation for, and then collective for journey of uh, normalization track for, because the implementation of the Bangsa Moro Organic Law and that of the normalization track for are uh, two sides of the same coin. They are intertwined with each other, interlocked with each other. Uh, we cannot just say that uh, we have uh, accomplished uh, uh, many things in one track uh, without necessarily looking at the other track who intertwine or interlock with each other. Mm -hmm. And sir, what does it mean to celebrate the BOL anniversary at a point when the transition has just one year and five months to go? On a personal level, I think it's something, something that I can say it's very fulfilling for. At least we have done our part. And we are now in the second uh, year anniversary of uh, the Langsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Union now. And uh, uh, collectively, at least uh, all, all the organs of the Langsamoro Autonomous Region of Muslim Union now are functioning quite well, although, as I said earlier, there are many challenges because of the challenges. There are many challenges. The important thing is that in the COVID po tayo, uh, halos walang movement po at wala po mas uh, gathering. At kahit na yung hiring process po namin, eh, medyo na antara na rin po dahil eh, walang face-to-face -face na mga interview na uh, maramihan. Uh, but uh, at anyhow, we managed to hire new employees in the farm, I think around 35 to 40 percent already. 40 percent? Uh, and sir, uh, alam naman po natin na yung, yung work of transition, hindi lang naman po trabaho yan ng BTA, right? Uh, yung national government may rin siyang role to play sa transition process. And kayo po ay chairperson ng intergovernmental relations body. And so you've been in contact with the national government officials who are supposed to help with the transition. So sir, how would you rate or describe the way national government has participated in the transition process? Well, the partnership between the IGR body of the BAM and that of the IGR body of the national government, ay talaga napakaganda po ang uh, partnership po namin. Uh, we are observing what we call the continuing negotiation in a non-adversarial way. And we managed uh, to really to discuss and agree on many things. But uh, if you look at uh, the numbers of what we have so far and the numbers that we have yet to accomplish, we must be able to complete the whole thing that we have started. So, in January 2021, we will be able to complete the joint report to the IGR body of the government, the IGR body of the government, the national government, so that we will be able to submit to the President if we are able to nagawa po namin, ano, uh, nasetel po namin ang mga issues, and then we also, we also inform the President and the Cabinet 
but there are many other issues that are yet uh, to be determined and uh, discussed and agreed upon by, by both parties. Mm-hmm. Okay. And sir, uh, alam po natin na may issues rin on delays. That in this process, di ba, hindi siya naging smooth. Um, there were lots of deliverables in the BOL na hindi pa nagagawa um, as of now. And it's past the deadline for some of these deliver- deliverables already. Um, for example, sir, yung uh, full transfer of the national government offices to the ar- to the BARM. Um, people are saying hindi pa siya fully nagawa. And um, things like the IGRB met five months after the BTA named the members, its members to the IGRB. So, sir, um, any comment on these delays? Do you think that we are past the the difficult part and that from now on, will, will there, can we still expect delays? Actually, personally, I would not call it a delay. Hindi naman ko talaga ng delay. Hindi lang talaga na kaya. Hindi lang talaga na kaya. Kasi pag sabihin mo delay, pag mo kang deliberate yung uh, parang sinasadya. Pero talagang yung mga challenges napakarami po. And then, pagtignan mo yung three years na transition, yung 2019 eh, programa, projects, ng, ba, ng ARM noon, at saka yung pondo, ang pondo ginagamit ko, yung pondo ko ng ARM. Wala, halos wala akong bagong programa sa 2019. Halos lahat eh, na pondo at saka programa and project ng Autonomous Region of Muslim Danao during the time of uh, original governor of Muslim Ataman. Sa 2020 po, dumating na po sa amin yung Black Grant. And then, uh, nagpasa na po namin ang Bangsamuro Appropriation Act. And at, uh, ang, ang nangyari po, eh, dumating po ang COVID. So we were caught uh, flat-footed, especially sa, uh, sa education sector po. Yung budget po namin, eh, wala akong pondo para po sa pag-address po ng uh, COVID-19 po. Kaya dito na hirapan po kami. Kaya 2020, na-COVID po tayo, hindi masyadong mabilis ang galaw po namin. Uh, yung hiring process na antala po. And then, uh, 2021, Eh, magkasagay po uh, yung implementation ng mga project and program na hindi na-implement sa 2020 at saka yung mga program and project sa 2020 ang magkasagay po yan. So we can just, uh, you can just imagine the, uh, the challenges uh, ahead of us in, in terms of uh, implementing all these programs and projects. So uh, I repeat, I would not call it as a delay, but kasi pag sinabi mo delay, Eh, parang deliberate action on the part of someone na hindi talaga gagawin. Pero all efforts po kami, ito, ito, ito po ang nagawa ko namin, ito po ang um, uh, nangyari na talagang hindi kaya po na implement lahat. Mm-hmm. And sir, uh, yung BTA nag-request sa Congress ng uh, amendments to the BOL precisely para ma-extend po yung transition period by three years. Could we just know, sir, uh, we know na nag-submit na po ang BTA ng uh, proposed amendments to the BOL and we know that one of them is yung date of elections to be made 2025. Aside from that, sir, mayroon po ba tayong expect na ibang proposed amendments from the BTA? Well, as far as the BAM government, uh, BAM government uh, from the executive authority led by the chief minister and the parliament, uh, wala na po tayong expect na pagbabago doon sa position the external transition from uh, three more years from 2022 to 2025. So, here, alam po ninyo, eh, the the law. The is so devastated that according to experts, it will take 20 years really to rehabilitate and develop uh, any devastated uh, region or uh, area like uh, uh, specifically the uh, uh, jurisdiction po na bang sa mga rotan mo sa dito ng Muslim Milano. At pangalawa po ay uh, ang, ang position po kasi namin, kahit na sa negosyasyon pa, at kahit na may mayroon po namin yung bang sa mga rotan mo sa dito ng Muslim Milano, originally kasi bang sa mga rotan mo sa dito ng Muslim Milano, ay ganun naman talaga ang namin. Seven years, six years or seven years, pero may ipasayong batas, yung nagiging three years lang po. At uh, related po, dahil kung kasi yung batas, yung nagiging three years lang po. At related po dati, Yung sa MLL at si Norman Suarez, isang pong time po sila, although may election, uh, may election, pero alam mo, kung sila yung susuportahan ng administration, without saying that the election is free, ay yun po ang nananalo. No, no one, no, no, no candidate in the arm, since its establishment, will uh, nanalo 
well, without the support of uh, the government of the day in Manila. So, sampun tayo po, si Emanuelet, si Norbis Suarez, si Parang Kusin, ano si kahit na si Moji Patanam po ay magiging ATS po na sa pwesto po. So, well, I'll tell you po, three years, just imagine 17 very years of hard, harsh, and protracted negotiation. And then you cannot expect really to implement the two tracks of implementation, the normalization track, and that of the political track, which is the implementation of the provisions of the EU. And in just two years, this one is not just, it's not about power. It's about putting into place, firmly, the foundation of peace and justice in the law. Okay. Um, and sir, yung three-year extension that you're asking for, um, does the BTA also have a plan for the additional three years? What exactly will you do for the first additional year, 2023, 2024, 2025? Meron na po bang pag-uusap about that? We are coming very soon with uh, the roadmap. Very soon yan po. At mukhang baka mga inusyo ulit from now, we will be able to come with an official roadmap on how, what do we expect or what do we intend to accomplish for the three years na hinihingi pa namin ng extension. But uh, 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 personally, I, I would have a, a three-point uh, 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 gagawin pa namin noon sa three years na extension po. Kailangan po dyan, yung lahat ng provisions ng bang sa Morongganit law is substantially implemented po, including a very functioning democracy, a very incredibly functioning bureaucracy po, bureaucracy po. And then, at ang mga po, yung lahat ng major progress and projects na nasa pipeline po ka lang po, ay ma-implement din po yan. Especially yung sinasabi na the evaluate led the Bangsamura to the Muslim and Muslim and now has not delivered the basic services, enough basic services to our people. Eh, hindi pa kayo kami dalawang tayo dito eh. Hindi ko mararamdaman talaga. Kaya na sinabi ko kanina, eh, karamihan po sa programs and projects, hindi ko na implement tayo po sa mga resources na, mga resources na nasasabi ko lang po. And then, pagkatlo po, eh, yung two tracks po, gaya na sinabi ko, they are intertwined, they are interlocked with each other. You cannot just expect the Uh, the foundation of peace in Bumalao, especially in Bumalao, to, to firmly take root without looking at the normalization track. Meaning, normalization is simply on the individual level, uh, each combatant uh, uh, transferring buhay nila from active combat life into a productive civilian life. And then, doon naman sa communities, yung conflict in Bumalao, yung mga tao rito kailangan mag-transfer ang buhay nila from an area of conflict into something na yung areas magiging productive civilian communities po. And then pag-apat po, ang gusto po namin na yung regular election ikakanda po yan if everything is already in place. Para ako masigurado po natin na yung taong dayan ay they can exercise the right to vote, the right uh, right to suffrage. Para ako wala ako ano, wala ako magiging problema. So pag itatanda po natin ano, yung election po sa 2022, sa totoo ay kahit na hindi pa ako kami matutulog from now until 2022, hindi yung inyong kaya talaga implement yung lahat ng normalization track at saka yung political track mo. That is the implementation of the provisions of the Bagsamoro organic law. Okay. Sir, magkakaroon po ba ng leadership change sa BTA po within the additional three years that you're asking for? Well, the provisions of the law will always still apply. Meaning, it's a transition period. Only there is an extension. And the law says that the 18 member of the Bank Sabre Transition Authority, 41 of which shall come from the Emirate. The Emirate will nominate 41 members of the the Bank Sabre Transition Authority and 39 will come from the government. As to the leadership, well, 
It depends on how the, the proposed law would be worded. But uh, ang importante ito, and a 41 will come from the Evalet. The Evalet will relate 41 members of the Bangsangro Transition Authority. And then 39 will come from the government. As to the leadership, I think, at the part of the Evalet, we don't have uh, uh, any, uh, any intention of uh, replacing the current Chief Minister of Dawan in the person of uh, 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 Ibrahim Bok. On the part of government, hindi ko kung alam kung papalitan nila yung 39 na uh, galing sa gobyerno o yun pa rin ay ano, yun pa rin ay uh, ilalagay nila sa Bangsangro Transition Authority na uh, such time sila 3 years po. Hmm. So sir, uh, is it true sir na may gusto si Chief Minister Murad na um, some sort of a, a guard or protection in the BUL that uh, will allow him to appoint new uh, MILF members in the BTA for those additional three years? I think that follows because, uh, although I am not a lawyer, but I, I think it follows that uh, when the, uh, the transition for three more, three more years will be granted, I think uh, it's not against the law that the MILF will, uh, will uh, put forward the uh, uh, some names which are who are that uh, part of the original 41 uh, names coming from the MILF. I think that uh, that's, that's possible. But for the moment, uh, uh, there, is no, there is no talk about that in, in, in the circle of uh, the MILF leadership and the world, especially the cabinet. Hmm. Okay. And sir, uh, you spoke already of the MILF leadership of the BTA. How do you think the MILF has changed as an organization during the past two years of the transition process? Well, on the personal level, I think uh, there is uh, there's really a great difference uh, in running uh, a revolutionary organization and running a government. Uh, but certainly, the MILF will remain. But it will no longer be a revolutionary organization, meaning it will no longer be an armed organization. It will become a social movement, but it will still uh, remain, it will still exist. And will undertake uh, socio-economic uh, interventions uh, to the civilians in the town But, uh, you know, uh, we organized the United Bank Summer of Justice Party because the United Bank Summer of Justice Party, which is a political party, will, uh, will engage in election. The United will not engage in election, but uh, the party that it organizes will be the one that will engage in the elections. Hmm. And um, you mentioned, sir, your normalization track, no? that which is the process by which we um, decommission combatants and give them a foundation for a productive life, participating in society. And um, si Chief Minister Murad has said that around 34% pa lang, sir, of the 40,000 combatants have been decommissioned. And um, I think only the cash the cash uh, portion of the 100 million benefit package for each combatant, yung na-release ng national government. So given the, these delays in the normalization track, do you think these delays endanger the gains uh, that we have here in the transition period? I would not call it as it will endanger, endanger the peace process, but certainly uh, it will affect uh, uh, it will affect the smooth flow of uh, the normalization process in Mindanao. Because uh, if you look at uh, the normalization track, it is uh, com uh, it is composed of eight eight elements. Uh, first is. Uh, uh, the extension of uh, socio-economic uh, intervention on the ground. Uh, second, uh, we need to decommission MLF weapons and combatants, and we are going to the decommission of 40,000, and uh, only 30% of 40,000 has been uh, decommissioned. Uh, and, uh, and yet, uh, as what uh, Chief Minister Murad Ibrahim said, that uh, he got it has not yet complied with the substantive aspect of uh, the intervention. For instance, the cost of uh, uh, the decommissioned combatants in terms of uh, amount uh, is one million, and only one hundred thousand has been given to each combatant. The remaining one hundred thousand for socio-economic uh, component, including housing, has not been delivered by government. And then there are other 
uh, aspects of the normalization uh, track. For instance, uh, uh, the granting of amnesty and pardon, uh, and, and transition of just and reconciliation program, disbandment of private armed groups, uh, and then uh, redeployment of armed forces of the Philippines to from a, a peaceful area to areas that are still in conflict, etc., etc. So, marami pa po eight elements po ang normalization track. Uh, ito pa lang, ano, ito pa transition of justice, eh. uh, while there are little movement forward, but essentially, uh, wala, wala akong talagang malaking ano, pagbabago nito ang nagingay. For instance, because ang uh, isang culmination po ng transition of justice and reconciliation program, this is about addressing the past. It's about uh, uh, addressing past injustices. Alibaba, you massive loss of land, you massive violation of human rights, and then uh, meron isang uh, meron isang opisina or agency that will uh, uh, focus on addressing this uh, transitional just and uh, uh, transitional issues. Yung tinatawag na National Transitional Justice and Reconciliation Commission for the Bank Samoro. Supposed to be may pasay yung batas sa Kongreso, pero I think it's dormant in Congress. In Congress. So, wala ang movement dito. So, looking at the normalization track, po, siguro, I am the chair of the Renale Peace Implementing Panel. Uh, probably, I can speak with authority. So, nakikita ko dito around 30% pa lang po na implement namin sa normalization track po. So, 30% is still remain to be uh, to be implemented by by the government and that of the MR because we talk about implementation. But basically, yung hindi na implement those sa normalization track po ay eh, responsibility po ng gobyerno ng Pilipinas. Hmm. So, sir, what has to happen? What do you think has to happen to speed up the normalization track? Well, you know, I tell you, I'm a young government party, the government is implementing a lot of the government, a lot of the MLA, really, it's not uh, so much efforts. And then uh, I think uh, one, one, one sure is to, to be out of this kind of situation. Ito sana ko, nagalala na hindi ko bide, kasi much of the funds intended for normalization track, normalization track po, eh, na realign po. Uh, sa ibang ibang programa po ng gobyerno ng Pilipinas, especially kung sa decommissioning of MLF in terms of combatants. Uh. So, sir, uh, ano, sa, ano sa palagay niyo yung biggest accomplishments of the BTA so far? Ay, marami ho. Marami yung accomplishments. Oh. Uh, yung mga, yung, yung adoption of the transition plan. Uh-huh. Uh, 2019-2022. That's one. And then, uh, yung administrative code po, nagpasa po namin. That's the mother of all codes. Kasi amin yung ano, priority legislation. So yung ina, yung nanay, may, may, may pasa na po namin, admin code. Pagsa mo administrative code. Then, gra- gradual facing out of employees and provisions of separation incentives. Uh, alam mo, dito sa ba ni... Yung lahat ng ministries and agencies, except three, eh, na-abolish po lahat. Abolish po lahat. And then, when, uh, now, we, we are starting really to build up or to prosecute any bureaucracy. And we have around 5,000 uh, new items, plentiful items. Pero al- alam po niyo, kung ilan ang uh, uh, applicants po, more than 300,000. So, the COVID po tayo, walang face-to-face, so hirap na hirap din po yung hiring process po. Mm-hmm. And then, yun ano po, yung continuity of the government services. Uh, kahit na despite the COVID-19 po, talaga sinita po namin na hindi maantala yung uh, functioning of the, the government. Uh, the government of the government. And then, intergovernmental relations ba dito? Uh, talaga gumagana po yan. And then, strengthening of revenue collections. Then high investment record, high investment record is I, I, I think uh, we are number 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 one or number two in you know, in terms of growth. Then we are number seven and uh, nationwide po. So talaga nalawala na kung gabalan dito at natiwala po ang taong bayan and they become uh, very productive and then the investors eh, will be on the pass of Pusila. And I mean, you know, it is for a great people, sir, when some of the people are going to be in the middle. 
And then, when turn over po, ano yung Cotabato City, order delayed na yan, when turn over ng Cotabato City po, it, so, it is supposed to be done immediately po. The moment na na-ratify yung Bagsamor Organic Law, and, uh, that was on January 21 po, dapat po automatic na yan, kasama, pa na, kasama na po ang Cotabato City. Dito sa Bagsamor ito lang yung Sinigil Muslim na now, but it takes more than one year po, bago na turn over last December 15 po. And ganun din po yung uh, government agencies, national government agencies dito sa Utapato City and City Tri Barangays. So first of all, within six months, matayang ever na yan sa van. Pero last uh, December 28 lang, uh, 28 lang po natin na ever yung mga ano, national agencies. And then meron po yung COVID-19. Huh? COVID-19 po, gaya na sinabi ko, I hope I am not uh, redundant in stating this uh, this issue, pero talagang it is very effective po ang COVID-19 response po namin. Well, capacity building, may strategic partnership, may 13 laws na po, may mga malalaki na ipasa po ng magsabang parliament po. So, so far ito po ang mga malalakihan na achievement po ng uh, magsabang autonomous region ng Muslim Union. So, sir, as a whole, sa kabila po ng lahat ng mga pagsubok the past two years, especially yung pandemic, um, do you think that the Bangsa Go Mora government has, to a certain extent, been able to deliver on its promises to the Bangsa Mora people of a government that is more felt? Yeah, simple, but, uh, you know, uh, up uh, 1 to 10, I think uh, we managed only to deliver around 3 to 4 percent, no? or maybe at most 3 percent. No? Thank you, sir. That is not the first year, 2019, programa, project ng ARM, ang prono ng ARM, 2020, nag-COVID po tayo, walang movement, nahirapan po kami, eh, pati yung fondo po namin, eh, yung sa nariri alam po, then pangatlo, 2021 po. Ito pa, medyo, ano, medyo, yung pinagal ng 2020, ano, well, the COVID and dito pa, eh. pero, alam mo, one thing that really devastated the mind of the people in fear for the COVID-19. Ako po, the COVID po ako. Yes, po, Master. COVID po ako, pero thanks God na ano na, wala na po. Survivor po kayo. Sir, just siguro more related to your portfolio in the BTA, yung Education Ministry, sir. Ah, we know that the president doesn't want face-to-face -face classes until the vaccine delivery, like herd immunity, is established. Sir, kayo po, do you think that this is a sound practice, or would you personally want face-to-face -face classes to begin in the barn at a sooner time? I'm going to be very, very frank with you, Madam. Uh, theoretically, there is no substitute for face-to-face, -face, the classical. But we are in. Uh, in a neutral situation, we call it a uh, new normal, which to be is abnormal situation. Kaya wala ko tayo yung magawa, unang una, yung nagsabi ng presidente, walang face-to-face. Pag-alawa, hindi ko natin pwede yung piliti yung face-to-face kasi pag magkaroon tayo ng epidemic, talaga magsisisi ko tayo. So, we are trying to do whatever is possible under the current situation po. Kaya ang approach namin, namely, blended po ang approach po namin. With whatever, or whichever is available in, in all the forms of uh, uh, learning, yun po ang ginagamit po namin. But namely, talaga blended yan. From visitation, uh, etc., etc. po. Sir, connectivity to the internet is a problem sa BARM, um, in, especially dun po sa mga remote island provinces or island towns. Um, sir, would you have any data, sir, on how many student age uh, people in the BARM, how many students in the BARM are currently doing online classes versus uh, how many students there are? In the mainland provinces, for instance, Lama uh, Sur, Maguindanao, the cities of... Uh, Marawi, City, City of Cotabato City, and the City of Barangays. Medyo maganda po ang uh, mga kabataan na gumagamit po ng uh, yung ano, yung tawag yan, yung gamit ng internet po. But I think it's not, uh, it does not even reach uh, 50%, even in mainland areas. But in the island provinces, uh, medyo mahirap po yun. 5% to 15%, 15% lang po ang connectivity po namin. So, hirap na hirap po. Kaya, minsan, 
Uh, kung ilan pala kayong panahon tumatakbo, siguro karamihan doon sa mga magulang, ayaw na nila. Uh, ayaw na nila uh, uh, ipadala yung mga anak nila sa, ano, sa eskila, i-indroll nila. They're expensive. And then, minsan nakakatawa rin eh. Kasi ano ba, bumili ka ng laptop. Eh, alam mo na may kabataan na yun, mahilig yan sa laro. So instead na matututo sila, minsan ginagamit nila yung mga laptop sa laro. Kaya, Uh, kaya ang, ang sitwasyon natin ngayon, eh, well, na, ang pinakamaganda talaga face to face, pero we cannot do that because we have to do whatever is practical uh, during this uh, ano, situation na may, may COVID-19 po tayo. Hmm. So sir, wala kayong effort on your part or uh, intention on your part to maybe propose a different um, scenario for the BARM? Especially since um, your cases naman are not as high as uh, Metro Manila, Cebu City, Davao City. I think it's a major creativity. Because we, ano, uh, we adapted what we call uh, adapt, adapted, uh, adapted learning materials. Because uh, uh, the whole Philippines, uh, nationally, ang, ang kanilang approach is uh, book, book-based yung mga modules nila, book-based. Pero dito, context-wise, ibig sabihin ko, ano ang ordinary nakikita ng data dun sa bahay, sa paligid nila, yun ang, yun ang nilalagay po namin sa adapted learning materials. So, basically, may nagkakaiba po sa nationwide kasi ang kanila, ang basihan nila, yung libro. Kaya sa amin, yung ano, yung konteksto, yung nakikita ng data, Araw-araw, yun po ang ginagamit po namin na nilalagay po doon sa mga modules na pinagbibigay po namin in sa eskwela dito sa bar. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, Minister Iqbal, siguro last question na po. Um, in the coming months, since you only have a year and five months before the end of the transition period, ano po yung ma-expect ng mga Bangsamoro people within that time period? Ano po yung unahan yung deliverable na hindi pa nagagawa? Uh, and ano po yung priorities nyo for that this time period? Alam mo, marami ho, ano, marami ho, we, we have inherited so many problems uh, in, the, in, the, in the arm before, especially due to the Ministry of Basic Higher and Technical Education, and the site one, the professional teacher. The <coughs> professional teacher dito, yung tinatawag na para-teacher. Para eh, uh, some of them were in the service 34 years ago, Hanggang ngayon, uh, hanggang ngayon, before I, I came into office, eh, there is still provisional. Well, meron ko pang naririnig na provisional, temporary. It takes uh, 34 years na maservisyo sila. So ito, nakatila siya ng challenge ito. But when I, when I was appointed as uh, the Minister of uh, Basic Higher and Technical Education, uh, and then for three liberal governments, for the governors, and then pangalawa, eh, sinabihan na ako ng the service na I have to do something about the provision of teachers. Eh, kaya, after, after a year, talaga nag-issue na kami, I already issued the cease and desist order. Na tanggal sila sa uh, para uh, ano, pagtuturo nila para provision of teachers. So, well, well, alam mo, nangyari, may, may kaso akong dalawa. Some of the teachers, around 40 of them in Maguindano, filed a case, two cases against me in court. So sabi ko maganda yan kasi ang batas naman talaga ang pagita natin. Kung ang legis, ang sinasabi ng batas, ibabayaran ko kayo, ibabalik ko kayo, so I'll be very happy. Because I do not want to, uh, I do not want to, ano, ayaw ko kayo tanggalin, pero wala ko magawa, yun ang batas eh. Kung, sa, kung nung panahon ng, ano, ang struggle po namin, eh, kung ginagawin po namin, ginagawin, ginagawin, wala lang yun ang batas ng gobyerno ng Pilipinas, kasi we are revolutionary, we are not supposed to observe the law. Pero ngayon, nandiyan ang bang sabura organic law, nandiyan ang bang sabura itong mga sabura itong mga sabura na ang yaring government, we see to it that most are followed. Are followed. So, we expect na in Chandang Luto, gradually we will be able to address yung na, na inherited na yung mga province. Then, we also expect na yung mga programa and projects will be implemented in full blast so that the people will be able to feel that really there is a difference uh, in, in the lives uh, now that we are already in, in the Bangsa Kalotolo. All right. 
Uh, thank you, Minister Iqbal. We are looking forward to those uh, promises and those priorities you've set forth for the next uh, one year and five months, and possibly if the extension is granted. So uh, we will continue monitoring the transition process here at Rappler. Um, thank you so much for joining us, sir. And thank you to our viewers for watching Rappler Talk. Salamat din po sa invitasyon at I hope that uh, I, I would be able to explain some important issues that our audience will be able to know and hear from the first note, so to speak. Salamat po.